Hey, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Stefan, and today I'm going to talk about a thing I did last autumn, where uh, I ran into some, I had seen them previously, issues with group object. And uh, I set out to try to fix them, and this is a description of the problems that I ran into and the steps I took to, to fix it. Uh, and one of the, th the most important thing here uh, is that the algorithm that was used by group object uh, was quadratic in complexity. And that are like fancy words, and we're going to talk about what that means. So there will be a bit of theory, tiny bit, on algorithmic complexity. And then we'll look at the actual case of fixing this. Uh, we will talk a little bit about this concept of runtime complexity. Complexity is just a fancy word for saying how does the time it takes to run something depend on how much data it gets and what kind of data in some cases. And the case study will be looking at how do we go about finding this issue in the code, uh, understanding why it's bad, and then finding a solution to it and fixing it. So to show you what I ran into, uh, this is Windows PowerShell. And I'm setting up two data sets, one called zeros and ones that just contains 5,000 zero one, zero one, zero one, zero one. And another data set that is all unique, one, two, three, four, five, up to 5,000. So I'm grouping zeros and ones, and that takes almost no time at all. Doing the same thing, grouping 5,000 numbers, took almost two seconds. Now I'm doubling the size of those data sets and running it again. Almost no time for the first one. And the second. Oops. This is where my developer spider sense starts single. Why? I doubled the size of the input, and what happened to the time? It became four times as large. Four times, like two times two is four, and I immediately suspect that it's quadratic. Oh, this lady has some bit of personality. And it's kind of true, like once you go back, black, you never go back. <sighs> oh, please. Yeah, I, I've spent most time lately in a black shell. And we don't have the same relationship as, as we used to. But, uh, okay, to classify algorithms, computer scientists use uh, the ordal notation to say, like, to describe how does the time it takes to run or the space in memory it takes to run depend uh, or change when I change the size of the input. As you saw, I doubled the input, I got a four times increase in, in runtime. The simplest kind uh, to describe here is when you have constant complexity, it's annotated with a single one, a number. And you can think of this like if, if you have a number guessing game. I have a sorted number of, uh, from 1 to 10, and I ask you to guess what's on position 5. Like, you, if you play this with kids, they fairly quickly pick it up. They do it in constant time. Logarithmic complexity, that you can think of that as, I have sorted numbers from 1 to 10. I'm thinking of a number. Which one? And like my kids, somebody peed in my gene pool, so they will start from the beginning and go up. But the smarter kids, they will start in the middle. And then they will bisect, divide the interval in half, find out if it's bigger or smaller, and then do it again and again. That is, the number of guesses they need is logarithmic to the size of the input. 
Linear is, I have numbers 1 to 10, but they are all scrambled. Guess which one I'm thinking of. Then they just have to start guessing. They might have to guess on every number. Log linear is the fastest way we know of sorting an array. That means, think that you have 10 numbers, and for each of them, you need to do one of those number guesses where you have to bisect to find another. And if you have to do that for each of them, you get n log n, as it's called. n is just the number we give, like the number of inputs we have. You, as a, an approximation, you can think of log n as the number of zeros. Uh, so the ten log, tenth logarithm of 100 is 2. The tenth log of a million is 6. As, as an approximation. Quadratic is when the runtime is the input time times itself given a constant, or like it can be more complex, but that this is like the bounding time. Group object in PowerShell showed quadratic complexity for the worst case input. Factorial is even more horrible. Uh, traveling salesman's problem is a classic computer science problem that's saying, this guy, he needs to visit these towns. What's the optimal route he has to take? Should you go first to A, then to C, then to D, then to, like, which way is the fastest? And for small inputs, this isn't that bad, but the complexity of solving this grows super fast. This is a picture showing, like, the badness of these different uh, variations. And as you see, do you see the, yeah, this is where the worst case of group object was. To show you a table of how, how, on the top, you have a quadratic algorithm with a super efficient implementation. It's 10,000 times faster, constant-wise, than the logarithmic one in the bottom. And with small input, 10, it's, the quadratic is much faster. Given 1,000, it's still a lot faster. 100,000, difference isn't that big. And with 200,000, even though like the constant factors were 10,000 to 1 against it, given enough size of, of the input, you lose every time. Like, you can't argue with a, a quadratic algorithm. Or my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so, understanding what goes wrong, this is where we use tools. But, but just... Uh, just to show you, uh, using PowerShell to get a table of, of uh, how these different numbers vary. I generate numbers from uh, 20,000 uh, 20, and upwards here. And uh, I, I create an object with n, with n log n, and with n square, quadratic. So you can see how the different algorithms how fast the square grows compared to the n log n case. And my goal today here is to get group object to become n log n instead of n squared. Dot trace is a performance profiler that samples a program and checks many times a second where are you now and builds up a statistical view of how much time I spend in different pieces of the code. So I will run a small script that will sleep for three seconds to give me time to, to click start profiling. Uh, so it, it writes go, and then I should click start, and then it, it uh, tries to group 5,000 items. So I run the profiler here on an old version of PowerShell that has this quadratic behavior. <laughs> I'm waiting for, I'm sleeping here, waiting for go. And I start profiling. So now we're calling into the common language runtime and asks it to, to give us this data, 
where are we now? Where are we now? And it will show me a view of how much time is spent in different functions. So I can pinpoint where the badness is. Pipeline execution thread definitely seems interesting. So if we would drill down here, we could go all the way and see the infrastructure of PowerShell, but I'm gonna search. So I'm typing control F to, and type group object command. That sounds what I want. And process record. This is where stuff happens. Okay, so I'm spending 98% of my time. Is it really small? Let's see, I'm gonna do like this. So I'm spending 19% of my time in group record, and group record is calling do grouping. And do grouping is calling compare. Do you see something else that would make you suspicious here? Check the number of calls. 3,000 calls to process record for group object turned into 11 million calls to compare. Is that good or bad? So, we're gonna open Visual Studio and go through the code here. But to prime you a bit, I'm, I'm gonna visually try to explain what I, what I expect will happen. So I have some numbers coming into group object. We get the first one. It's now in process record. There's no other buckets that yet we haven't done anything yet, so we create a new bucket and put the one there. We get the next number. It checks, am I one? No. So a new bucket. We get two. Am I one? No. Am I three? No. New bucket. Four. Am I one? No. 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 Now imagine you're 9,556. Still fairly fast. Imagine you're a million. You see the problem. This is a quadratic algorithm because for each input, I have to compare against each and every one of them. That's how you spot a quadratic algorithm. When you end up with doing for each something, for each something else, you're at risk. It may be that one of them are small, and that is what happened when we had the first case. When we only had zeros and ones, we only had two buckets. So then we, for each of them, we only did two com comparisons. But when the input data was all unique, we hit the worst case. Then we became quadratic. I, I ran into this at my father's place. He had imported pictures. And then he forgot to empty his memory card and then he imported them again into a new folder. So he got duplicates. And he wondered like, why do I see these duplicate pictures? And I thought, this, this is a test for PowerShell. So let's just get all the images and group them by name. And, and those that have the same name, let's also group them by length. And if I get count more than, than two, problem solved. And I expected this to be like a, a, a matter of seconds. It wasn't. So I talked to Jeffrey, but he never got around to prioritize this. So eventually I ended up, when they open sourced this, to take a look at it myself. Before we dive into, to, this is, we're gonna look at C Sharp code, the implementation of group objects. But just to show you like the similarities, to the right you have a PowerShell advanced function. Uh, to the left, uh, the, um, the other left, right. To the left you have PowerShell and to the right you have uh, C Sharp. You see that it's the one-to-one -one mapping. The begin block is called begin processing in C Sharp. The process block is 
called process record. And M block in PowerShell is called M processing. So, uh, I'm going back in time here, uh, checking out the version of the code in the repo uh, before uh, the code was uh, fixed. I'm importing the build module, which is used to build PowerShell from the command line. And I'm creating a debug version of, of uh, what the... Excellent. We'll see if this will be, uh, we, we will be able to de debug anyway. It, it's not the end of the world if, if we can't. But we can start looking at the process record. Think of this as the process block of a function. If group object was a function, this is where we end up for each object of the pipeline. So instead of stepping through this, uh, can you see at this size, or do I have to make it smaller or bigger? Back, it's okay. Yeah? Uh, so when we get into process record, it checks that if we have something to to do. Yes. Uh, and then the first time around, we do something special that we don't have to care about, and we create an object uh, that helps us to group. Did you know that you could group by more than one property? Have you seen that? Oh, um. Say that we group on name, length, and then write a script block the, with the name of the length. And uh, form this. So you see, we get first the name, then the length, and then the length of the name. So this code is, is there to handle being able to compare more than one property. And then we call do grouping, and this is done for each object, right? And if we go and look into do grouping, Remember, this is called once per object. After a while, we see we have some fast path getting in a group that's already there, but in our case, we had all unique values, so we won't get there. We get into four. For each what? For each group that we have. And here's the problem. Do you remember when we saw the buckets at the bottom? The last group the last number we will get will be one larger than the number of groups. So when we have tried to group a thousand, we will have 999 groups that we all have to go through and compare. And this is why we saw the million, 11 million calls to group object. Hands up now, those who are thoroughly confused. <laughs> Those hands up those who think, okay, this is, I kind of get it. I at least see there's a problem. Yeah. And when I, when I got here, this isn't something that, like, I'm going through this fast. When I sit down and actually do this, you can sit for hours and trying to understand like, like the, the different details before you know what parts are important and, what, what, and which ones aren't. In this case, experience told me when I saw this inner loop and saw the groups, ah, for each, for each, I knew, I knew what, why I saw what I saw. For each, for each, doing a for each within a for each is bad because 
the, the time to do that grows so fast when the numbers get bigger. You won't see a problem with a hundred, but you will remember a thousand times a thousand is a million. Ten thousand times ten thousand. It goes so fast when you get a hundred billion. Oh, so, sorry. Okay, so coming up with a faster algorithm. Grouping is a simpler problem than sorting, because I really don't need... It's more a job to put them in order. I just have to find those that are the same. So it should be possible, at least, to be done at the time that we can do sorting, which is much faster than the quadratic stuff. So imagine that the input is sorted. What could we do then? If I know that every object that comes in is, is greater than the last one, I don't have to check every bucket, right? I only need to check the last bucket, because either it's the same, or I have to create a new bucket. Right? Because if I, if I know that all the numbers that I have gotten previously, all the buckets that I have, are smaller than what I have now, smaller or the same, then I, it's no need to check all the others. So our new algorithms, algorithm will be to sort the inputs and only compare to the, to the last. If they are equal, add it to the last bucket, and if not, create a new bucket. And this should be much faster for larger inputs. But it may be smaller, uh, fa uh, slower for smaller. Maybe the overhead of doing the sorting is worse than checking just a few buckets. But how bad is that? If it takes two milliseconds or one millisecond, do you really care? Probably not, as long as you can avoid like the, the badness of a quadratic algorithm. So try to try to visualize this. You see we have unsorted input coming into group object. And the first thing we do is sort them. We create an internal list somewhere and sort this. Then we take the first, second, and third and process them. And now we have, we're at the fourth number. Is it three? No. Five? Is it four? This is equally fast no matter how big my input is. So this part of the algorithm, won't, you won't see its effect on the runtime. The sorting now will become the, the, the part of the work that defines how long time this will take. But n log n grows much, much slower than n square. I, I actually still, yeah, in this implementation, I actually use more memory, but we still keep all the buckets in memory before we output it. But yes, in this implementation, I'm using more memory. Can you always sort the objects? I mean, numeric, yes, but you can also group by processes and stuff. Uh, the, qu the, qu the question was, can I always sort the objects? And, and in the CLR, the answer is yes, because every object is sortable. And in the worst case, they use the address of the memory where the object lies to sort it. it it's completely meaningless, but it will be sorted. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Compared on uh, Tuesday, uh, if you calculate uh, the amount of items in the beginning, 
Then you have the uh, end value and can put it directly in the brackets, so it should be faster and less um, memory as you uh, um, okay, the question is regarding pre-allocation of collections. And, and my problem here is that I don't know how many items I will get from the pipeline. So I have a hard time to pre-allocate this list that I want to sort of the right size. So I have to fall back on the behavior of this container to grow uh, quite a lot each time it needs to reallocate. Uh, it turns out to be be good enough. So to fix this, order entries to order is this new list that I created. So in process record, I remove the call to to do grouping. I don't group any longer when I process. I just collect them and put them uh, in a store to use later. And then we move the work to end processing, to the end block of the function. Now we have all the numbers. And in the top here, the order by is a method that does a stable sort. It doesn't change, it doesn't move around uh, order of the, the order of objects that compare equal. And for each of them, I call do ordered grouping. I, I, need to, I needed to keep the old implementation, too, because there are cases where this became so complicated I couldn't really reason about it when the input was of different types. So then I, f I fall back to the old slow behavior uh, when I couldn't be sure uh, I could do the right thing. And in this loop that we were looking at, I changed, I removed the loop and make it an if statement instead. So now I'm, I'm no longer dependent on all the groups, I'm just dependent on the last group. Do you remember from the visualization before, just check the last group? Either the same or a new one. So let's see this first, like the actual change wasn't just a few lines. Everything that's read here changed. But 90% of this was style changes. No, there shouldn't be a white space there. No, you should yeah, follow the style guidelines. And the code was old, so we did a lot of like cleanup of it. But all you saw all the relevant changes. But actually getting a commit through is more work than you sometimes would want. So. To the left, we have my old lady, lady Windows PowerShell. And to the right, we have well, the girl I've been hanging out with some more lately. And uh, I'm gonna throw some data at these girls. When the race starts here, we start with 3,000 numbers, 6,000, we go up to 9,000. And it may be that Windows PowerShell forgot to tie her shoelaces, but she will catch up, I think. Do you see the differences now when we don't have a quadratic algorithm? How do you think this will end when we keep increasing the size of the input. Do you think it will get worse? Much worse? Much, much, much worse. <laughs> and uh, this is the thing that you can't never ever argue with a quadratic algorithm. They kill you every, every time. <laughs> Come on. 
This is like a kid. <laughs> okay. I would get pissed, but my kids are worse, so I'm kind of used to it. <laughs> Have you noticed that PowerShell is still working on... Windows PowerShell is still working on 30,000? <laughs> Something cool here is that there is actually... To do this... Uh, To do this, uh, to be able to have those rays at the same time, uh, I've actually made a small RPC server within them, so I'm hooking the prompt and the read line uh, in the function, so, so when it asks to write out the prompt, it's actually asking a server to get the next thing to do. So I can, from a hidden window behind this, uh, direct work to them. And then you can have this uh, synchronization between windows. Uh, you see, when, we, when we're doing 3 million in PowerShell Core, it starts to take a while. I would expect this to be around 45 seconds. What do you think, given the history you see for Windows PowerShell? I'm only doing 10,000 more. The last one was 77 seconds, but my guess is that will, it will more than double. So PowerShell Core is now up to 4 million. Compare that to the 40,000. You can't argue with a quadratic algorithm. It's so, so like. A key takeaway here is if you're writing code where you have a for each loop or processing pipeline input and find yourself looping through a collection that is somehow connected to the size of the input, you're, you're in, in poo poo. It's like it, you should try to find alternative solutions. Another cool thing, like my problem in preparing this speech was that I had to sit in front of a computer. Okay, it took 60. <sighs> yeah, 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 we know you're fast. And there, 148 seconds for Windows PowerShell. The runtime, yeah, since I have a, a small server, I can con gather the runtimes of each command and plot them. So you can see how, how it just sh shoots through the roof for Windows PowerShell. It looks like it does so for core, but that is because I'm doing 10 times as much work in each, each time it steps up. So if we, like this takes so long to do, so if I, if I just show you when it takes a thousand an increase of step by a thousand at a time. You get this, well, you all know it from your nightmares about quadratic complex complexity, the image that haunts you, the curve that shoots through the roof. So, you can't argue with a quadratic algorithm. Dot trace pinpointed at once where in the code the problem was. You remember this? We looked and saw 3,700 calls, and at the line below, you remember how many it was? 11 million something. And when you see that, you know 
you have a problem. A large part of fixing things like this is to really try to understand what the, the code does so that your new version doesn't break stuff. And to be fair, what I did broke stuff. So Steve and uh, Joey and Bruce had to sit down and think, is it okay that the order of the groups in the output uh, is changing because they are now outputted sorted? I actually like that better. But what I like doesn't matter because it's a different behavior. Could somebody have written scripts that depended on the output order of the groups? Sure, they could. Uh, is, would that be a good idea? Probably not. Would it be hard to fix? No. I could just add pipe sort name and you get the same behavior as, as we have now. Or, but, but yeah, maybe potentially it could be a bit tricky to fix. Yeah, this was actually what I was talking about previously. And that's about it for today, except for a common that when I sat down to do this, hands up those who were here for my talk about memory optimization, uh, quite a few. Ah, when you look at the code for doing this, you spot that we, we created a tuple from array to get an object that com could compare if you used more than one property to compare with. But we did that even if we only had one property. So then we created an array to contain a single element, which is completely unnecessary in the most common case. So there it makes perfect sense to, to do an optimization. That would complicate the code and make it harder to read. And this is something that we often end up with. Optimized code is uglier code. It's, it's seldom beautiful because you have to special case for common cases and, and jump through some, some hoops to, to, do, to get this performance. But if it's a common scenario, it, like in a core commandlet, it may very well be, be worth it. Questions? Can you, as a, can you get similar behavior with the numerable group by doing it via link? Can you repeat the question? The question is the enumerable group by algorithm in, in the link part of the C-sharp code. Can you get a similar quadratic behavior? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, the thing is, it's not impossible because almost all uh, algorithms have, have a worst case inputs where they behave much worse than others. But I hope not because, as I said, grouping is a simpler problem than, than uh, Sorting. So I've actually we, we've been discussing if we could get this down to to linear time. But I, I'm not familiar enough with how how group by and, and link is implemented to, to be able to to answer that. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so maybe my question is a little bit of topic, uh, but um, you uh, split one algorithm with this complexity uh, n quadrat to two different algorithms uh, with different complexity. Yes. So for example, if one of them would be n log n and another one just log n. That, that's a, an excellent question. I'll repeat it. Uh, the question was, if you have two parts of an algorithm where one is n times log n and the other is log n, how do you, what do you call that? And the ordo concept always focuses in on the most, the worst part, because the other part will become completely insignificant when the input grows. As soon as you're in like a lower order, given enough input, you, it will become noise. You won't even see the effect of the lower order. 
because of the growth factor of the, the more complex one is so much greater. So you can think of n times log n plus log n as just ignoring the latter part, later part and just focus on the n times log n. Really good question. When we discussed if we could do this in linear time, uh, using a hash table was was the way we were discussing. Because uh, inserting things into a hash table is amortized uh, constant time. Would you like to know the size of the input beforehand? Yeah, but, but, but the, the problem here is that the grouping in PowerShell tries to do type conversion. So if you have uh, the string one and the integer one. PowerShell will try to see, can I convert this integer into the string? And if so, compare them. And then computing hash codes from that becomes much harder. So, so but, but like, please have a look at it. If you can come up with a way of, of doing it, it would be awesome. But, but uh, like, I, I got stuck at this thinking it, it got too complex and I'm, I'm quite happy with the improvements uh, I got. So let's, let's start with this. And if we can take it further, cool. B but don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Yes. What was the reason for the original grouping algorithm not to be stable? The, what was the reason for the original grouping algorithm not being stable? Or do you mean the, that it had a quadratic... No, that it did not preserve the input order. Because it, uh, it created buckets in the order that they arrived. So depending on, on like if you have a 1, 3, 4 coming in, or one. One, four, three. It created the bucket one. Then it created the bucket four. Then the bucket three. And then in the output them all in that order. Simple as possible. It just added uh, the numbers as they ca came in. But uh, if you, if you get used to, to the new, new version, I actually like getting the groups, uh, the name. T uh, column of, of the output is sorted, and I find it easier to find stuff in it. So I, previously, I very often piped that to sort just to get that behavior. Yeah. Oh, always, yes. Sometimes you, you do it on count. Okay, Paul again. Was this thoroughly confusing, or did you think it was approachable enough that you could at least follow along somewhat? Ah, cool. I don't have anything else if you don't have any more questions.